Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, I am so excited to share with you guys a brand new mega tutorial. It's gonna be really long, like about 39 minutes, just the tutorial itself. So what I'm gonna do today is show you guys how I create all my brushes. So it's gonna be a brush making course, a full one to be exact, but it's gonna be aimed at beginners so you will be able to follow and it's quite easy as well. And also, these are the brushes that we will be making today. So we will be creating a few basic brushes just from modifying a single brush. So we'll be creating the eraser brush, the smudge brush, painting brush, and modifying the airbrush from that. And we will also be creating some effects brushes that is catered more to portrait painting in Procreate and also some fun brushes like glitter and textures at the end of the tutorial. So in order to begin with this tutorial, you do need to download a single brush and a project from Procreate from my website and let's get right into it. Okay, before everyone begins, just head over to hazelong.com slash Procreate download and then you will reach this website and when you scroll down you can see there's the starter pack here how to create your own brushes hashtag one so this is the beginner tutorial that is relevant for today and when you are here you can see that there's a pay what you want and if you tap on the drop down there's a couple of options here but you actually essentially get the same file so you can actually just download for free um, add to cart and then tap check out Okay, make sure that you enter the correct email so that you can get your downloads. Okay, then when you tap on continue payment, you can see that your order is free, no payment is required. Then just tap on complete order. So what will happen is if you wait a little bit, it will say that it's preparing your downloads and then you can just tap on download now. So this will actually start a download in your download section here. So if you just tap on the zoom icon, it will bring you to the files app. So right here, I have files app on my left and Procreate loaded on the right. You can see here. Alright, so now the zip file is right here. All we have to do is tap on it and it will actually unpack into the folder. Inside this folder, there are two files, one brush set and one Procreate file. So the Procreate file is actually the exact same thing as here. So all you need to do is to just drag it into your Procreate projects gallery in order for it to import. And to import this brush set, all you have to do is to tap on this uh, project or any project and then you can just drag it inside this screen for it to import into your Procreate. Once you have done that, you can see that it will appear here with one brush only. So let's talk about the project and this brush. So we're gonna actually start the whole tutorial with this brush and, and we're gonna use this project to create the brushes today. So why are we gonna create all the brushes in this particular project? It's because this project is square. It's 2048 by 2048, which is actually the size of a brush shape. So if you create everything, for brushes within this tutorial um, project, it will actually be the correct size and the maximum resolution. And there is also a portrait here for you to test your brushes on once you have created them. Okay, now are we ready? Let's dive into the brush creation process. So this is the brush that you will see in the brush pack that you have downloaded. There's just one brush. So I'm going to show you what this brush does first before we start the tutorial. So let's turn this off and if I use this brush and pick a color, you can see that I already have a few size settings here. So you can add all these by just tapping on the plus sign to save your brush size and what this brush does is it's a very versatile brush I like to use this brush to do a complete painting so I can sketch with it it's very smooth and it actually helps you smooth your curves as well so it's not as jaggedy as you would think it would be and if you tilt your apple pencil you can see that it shades okay now I want you to observe what happens when I paint with this brush so if I paint with short strokes I get something like this but if I hold the stroke and continue painting, you can see that it's fading away. And this is kind of the effect that it gets. And I'm going to explain to you why this happened. Okay, So if you go here, then you tap on the brush, you can see that there's actually two brushes here combined into one to create one brush. So this is why it is 
fading off as I am painting and then right now I'm gonna show you a very important rule when you are creating brushes okay so if you scroll all the way to the end to about this brush you can see that it's made by me okay and then you can see that there's reset points so you see that mine has a reset point already on the date and the time so what I want you to do is to create a new reset point so if you tap on create a new reset point it will say that you're creating a new reset point for this brush it cannot be undone so what does this mean is you're going to actually save a version of this brush so if you do any like changes here for example and then something went wrong like it does not behave like how you expect it to be you can just hit reset brush and it would just reset back to the last save so this way you will never ever ever lose the brush even though you keep tweaking it and this is very important think of it as a save point so once you have reset this brush and create a reset point already you are free to do whatever you want to this brush so what we want to do is to duplicate it so that we can create more brushes all right so right now you see if i paint here you can see that it's fading so let's just quickly get used to the brush and paint a few strokes so let's say i have made a mistake and i want to erase so let's see if we can erase with this brush mm. so i'm gonna go over to my eraser and make sure that i load the brush that we have duplicated here into the eraser tool so that we are erasing with this brush so if i erase if i erase in short strokes it's working as intended but if we are erasing a large space you can see that it's fading out and obviously this is not a behavior that we would want for an eraser so this eraser tool is something that we need to create first because it's very important to have an eraser brush so you see that this is something that we do not want so how do we actually get rid of this so let's start by tapping on the brush and let's call this the eraser and then now let's tap here and tap on uncombine the moment you uncombine it's going to split into the brushes that the components were made of so it was made of this plus this and it became this brush so we can try we can use this one and try and use it to erase and you can see that it's gradually increasing as i erase so this is something that we do not want so we can go ahead and delete this and now let's try to erase with this and you can see that this is a behavior that is very predictable and it's very comfortable for us to erase with this brush and we can safely just use this brush to erase so the next thing to look for is probably a smudge brush to create our smudge brush let's just quickly drop in two lines of color here so that we can test how it smudges later on and you can see here if i'm using just the sketch brush here to color i can just automatically fade out as i paint and this is actually very useful and very convenient for me to already fade in the colors without using the smudge tool but right now we're trying to create the smudge tool so let's try and do that so if we go into our smudge tool we can actually go and duplicate this brush and then we're going to try and smudge with this brush but before we do that don't forget to rename it all right so now let's try and smudge it up find out if you are comfortable with it like is it smudging enough like do you find it easy when it comes to pulling out the strokes and mixing the colors if you are you can just leave it as it is but if you are not you can actually just tweak it so to tweak it you can tap on the smudge tool and then go ahead to properties and when you're in properties you can see smudge is at 83 percent so you can actually just tweak this like if i turn it down to 30 percent it doesn't actually smudge that much and it's it's gonna take a lot more effort to move the paint around so if you want a more smudge capability then you can just increase it back maybe if you pull it a hundred percent okay then it's moving the paint itself without actually blending because it's just pushing it entirely and you can actually use this to paint instead of to blend so you kind of have to find a in-between that is comfortable for you so i'm okay with 83 percent and if you have difficulty smudging even with this high number 
what you can do is actually head over to stabilization so stabilization actually smooths your curves like if you draw an S it's smoothing out like that so if you turn it off it's going to keep a lot more of your personality when you're painting like example if you're making any mistakes it will actually show but if you increase the streamline you can see that it's smoothing out and it looks more pleasant but you lose the character of your strokes so if you turn down your streamline and your stabilization you will find that it's a lot easier to smudge it moves a lot easier right now because you are no longer fighting against the technology so this is how you can create your own smudge brush and at this point remember we have created the eraser brush right now and also the smudge brush so remember that with every new brush that you create please go into about this brush and create a new reset point to save that brush remember to do that so that in case next time if you tweak it you won't lose the brush itself if you made a mistake so right now we have the sketch brush, the smudge brush and the eraser we would like to make the painting brush because sometimes maybe you do not like to use this brush to paint and you just want a regular old school style painting brush so let's see how we can create that and learn all about brush making in the process so let's duplicate this rename this Alright, now I'm going to uncombine it because I do not want the grain. So you actually have to decide yourself if you want the grain or not. So if you like that as an effect, then you keep it. But if not, uncombine it. So I'm going to uncombine this. And this is what I have. So let's just delete the grain away. And go back into the painting brush. So you're going to be using this drawing pad a lot to test your brush. So the first thing that we want to do is to pick a new shape. So if you click on the shape tab, you can see that this is the brush shape that we are using right now. So if you tap on edit, import source library, this is all the brush shapes that's available right here in Procreate. And you can just try each one of them out and see which ones you like. For me, I'm going to pick with this regular painting shape because it's the most definitive simple painting brush shape ever and if you can't paint with this brush shape it will be difficult to use any other brushes okay so once we have changed it you can see that it updates into this brush stroke so what we want to do right now i do not want it to fade out into a smaller shape i want it to remain big because i just want to use this brush to fill in colors quickly and easily so what we can do to make that happen is to head over to dynamics and see what's happening there so here you can see there's speed size and opacity and there's some values here so what does this mean this means that the slower you paint the smaller the size of the brush would go and the more transparent it would get so observe so you can see here i'm slowing down and once i slow down it's going to be smaller and it's going to be less opaque so we're going to turn this right off all right so we don't get that anymore whether we are fast or slow it's the same thing but you can see that there is still a fade going on so if we go into apple pencil tab you can see that there are also some values in size opacity and flow so what does all this mean it means that if i'm pressing hard the size of the brush is going to increase right here and if i'm pressing hard the opacity is going to increase and there's going to be more paint as well so I do not want the size to decrease at all so I want it to stay like consistently the same size so we're gonna turn this right off but if I see here I can see that this the size is still changing so maybe it's affected by something else so I noticed that there is also a setting here and the size for tilt so we're gonna turn this right off as well one single stroke like that it's gonna give us this kind of effect and right now I want to fade the less pressured parts off so that if I'm painting lightly I get more of a blending effect okay I'm gonna drag the flow all the way up so that if I press lightly nothing seems to come out because if I just reduce it everything is gonna be maxed out all the time so this actually has a lot to do with how hard you use your apple pencil and how hard you press when you paint so um, if you press lightly it should just have a little bit showing up okay let's see if we can blend the most important part is if you put another color in you can easily just pick colors in between let's say for here paint it again and then pick another in between color 
And then just by picking colors like this, you can actually just complete a blend without using the smudge tool. If you can comfortably do this, this would mean that you have already succeeded in your brush making. So I'm quite okay with this brush and I think I can call this done based on my behavior when I use the Apple Pencil. Of course, you can always use the opacity tool here to just control how you use the brush. Alright, now that we have our painting brush, it's easier to create more painting brushes out of this. So this is a hard painting brush which means that it has a hard edge at the edge there. We would need a soft one in order to create even more brushes from that. So usually we call that the airbrush which has soft edges all around. And this airbrush is very versatile because you can use it to quickly fill up areas or quickly shade up areas softly. So we're going to create that using the painting brush. So before we do anything, always remember to create a new reset point. And this time we are duplicating the painting brush. Now let's go in. And all we need to do for this is to change the shape. So click on edit and you can pick any shape that is soft edge. Okay, so we have medium hard, medium soft and ultra soft. So it depends on how soft you want your shapes to be. So I think soft is just nice for me, but you can test it out yourself. So let's just see if this would work for us. So max out the opacity. The first thing to test is if you can fill out the entire canvas. So let's max out the brush size. You can see here it takes quite some time to max out. So let's adjust that. Click in, go to properties, max out the brush size for maximum size. And right now, if you do this again, you can see that it's really huge brush here and you can easily just cover the entire screen. But you can see that it's slightly too huge. So you can just tune it down a little bit and see how big it is for maximum size. Find a number that you're happy with, then we can test something else. All right, so right now let's just do a test and paint a rainbow just using this same brush size and try to make it as soft as possible. If you can do this, it will mean that you were successful in changing your brush. So airbrush is really really useful when it comes to filling in colors and creating light shadows. So let me show you what I mean. So if I turn on this painting again, I just want to shade her face for example. So let me just get a brush size that I am comfortable with. And then we're going to pick the shadow color. This is a shadow color. Let's just contour her face. So let's just do this. Once we have that, we can actually erase away what we don't want. And there we have it, just a slight shadow to her face. It's as simple as that. But sometimes you see that it's so clean, it does not have any texture. So this is where you can decide if you want to keep or uncombine the grain that was already in the default brush itself. Alright, so the next brush that we're going to create a highlights brush. So highlights brush means all these effects, all the highlights effects that we can do with just a different brush. So for example, right now we have a painting brush and an airbrush. So let me just rename this brush real quick. Alright, let's just duplicate the airbrush and rename this because this is soft highlights. So for example, if we just paint with white, so this is not considered a highlights brush, okay? This is just a normal brush. If you just paint a light color over any painting, chances are your painting is going to look chalky because you're guessing what colors are the highlights going to be. So right now, we can actually just have a brush that can instantly put highlights whenever we want. All we have to do is really, really, really simple. It's just a one-step thing, okay? Head over to rendering. Under blend mode, you can actually choose screen, color dodge, or add. Okay, so for example, if you click color dodge, you can actually test it out here. I'll show you how to. So let's pick a color. Okay, if I pick a dark blue, you can see that it's no longer painting blue, it's painting white. And if I paint softly, it's blue, but when I press hard, it becomes white. Okay, right now, let's just pick a dark color, the same blue color. So let's see what happens if I paint. You can see that when I paint, it has a pink inside and outside is blue. If you click on the layers, you can see that I'm painting on a new layer above the portrait. So this is very important, watch this. If I tap on the portrait and I paint on the portrait itself, you can see that the effect is completely different. So if you're using 
brushes that messes around with blend modes. The best effect is to do it on the actual layer itself, like directly on the layer like this. Then you can put any highlights that you want. So for example, I'll just pick this, undo it. So let's push down the opacity. So you can see that I can easily just put highlights just like this on that layer itself. So the question is, how do we control what color to use? And what if I do something wrong and I cannot undo anymore? What's gonna happen? Okay, so let me answer your question one by one. To control this tool as much as possible, you always have to start with dark colors. So start with dark colors and see what you get first for in terms of colors before you proceed to using bright colors. Because the moment you use bright colors, you lose any color at the edges. And of course, if you change the blend mode to add, it's a completely different look. So if I paint with just now, this was this color, it's a completely different look. So you actually have to just test it out. I would leave it at color dodge until you are not happy. So if you're not happy, you can change it to add, but usually I just leave it at color dodge. Okay, as for colors, I actually have a couple of color palettes that you can download from my website um, from Portrait Color Palettes. This is the one, Tins for Highlight. Every single one is going to give me a different color. So I already map it out that way, so it's really convenient for you to uh, modify from there. So let's say, uh, this is the color of the highlights for this portrait, by the way, this color. So we can use that to modify. So let's just modify it and make it slightly darker so that we can control better and less vibrant, then you can see that it's a lot more controllable. But if you want more color, you can just saturate it back a little bit and then push it. It's all about thinking about what kind of color that you want for your highlights. What if I want to use this on another layer? So for example, let's say you want to use this on another layer. All you have to do is to set the layer to color dodge. Okay. But this time, you don't really need to use uh, this brush anymore. Any brush you use would give the same effect. So just remember that if you're using layers to create the blend mode, you can use any brush to create that effect. You do not need to use the highlights brush anymore. You only need to use a highlights brush if you are on the direct layer itself. So that is why this appeared to look like this, even though this was done with that brush but because it was another layer, so it shows up like that. You can practically turn anything into a highlights brush. So for example, you really love this brush, this natural sketch brush. All you have to do is to duplicate it, go to the rendering tab and turn this into color dodge to make this a highlights brush. Then if you paint this on the direct layer, you can really, 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 really easily put in highlights anywhere you want. It's super convenient, super easy. All you have to do is to change the color to match the part that you're painting. It's really easy to match the color. You just have to push around to get a color that is correct. Then you adjust the intensity of how gray you want it to be. That's it. So you can go ahead and create as many highlights brush as you want and then we will proceed to the next brush after that. Okay, now that we've learned how to make the highlights brush, we can of course easily make the shadow brush. So for the shadow brush, let's just duplicate the highlight soft brush or any other brush that you have made into highlights. Let's just make it into shadows. And it's as simple as going to the rendering tab and changing this to multiply. And as usual, you want to use this on the layer itself, the direct layer that you want to change. And you can just easily add in shadows. And there we go, a shadow brush. It's as simple as that. And of course, you can always just create brushes that has a lot more texture than this when you want a shadow brush. So if you want to do that, you can always just duplicate it off the natural sketch brush to mod it into a shadows brush. Okay, the next brush we're gonna make is one of my very popular brush called Change Color Only Brush. So with this brush, you can actually change the color of any section you like. So let's say you have started this painting in a black and white format and you want to color this 
right now so it's easy to do if you have the change color only brush before I show you how to do that we're gonna turn on this rainbow layer right now and we have, I'm gonna demonstrate something to you so this change color only brush is created using the same method as the highlights or the shadow brush which means it's gonna be using a blending mode so right here I'm gonna demo the blending mode the blending mode that we're gonna be using is the color so what this color blending mode does is it changes everything in its path to the color that it is and also the chroma that it is what does that mean it means that the blue here is very vibrant the vibrancy value and the color value is affecting this part but there is one value that is not affecting which is the brightness and the darkness of the painting which is why you still see the painting right here because the values of the brightness and the darkness are still there the black and whites essentially so what happens if I change this to hue if I change this to hue you can see that nothing another curious thing to notice is if I turn off this gray layer and I only have this color layer now I apply this on top you can see that the colors are showing through somewhat for the hue blending mode you are only applying the color but you're not applying the chroma or the brightness and darkness which means the original values here how dark it is how bright it is how gray it is it is being retained you're only changing the colors because the hair is so gray it does not have any color values anymore so the colors is not affecting it at all which means that all these parts are pure gray they are pure gray that's why no colors is appearing and that is also why when I use it over the grayscale layer nothing is happening because the entire thing is already gray there is no color value anymore this layer itself is not going to have any effect at all if it's on hue blending mode so this is very important to understand because everything has three types of value it has a color value and it has chroma and value okay so this one let's not call this value because there's so many terms with the words value so let's just call this brightness darkness so this is how gray it is and this is what color if you're using hue you're only applying the color but if you're using color you're applying color and chroma so when you are creating a brush that changes color you actually have to decide which one you want to use so for me i would usually just pick color so let's create that brush right now really quickly and we'll recolor that painting really quickly too so let's go over here let's just duplicate the shadows brush all right change the blend mode all the way to color that's all we need to do and of course let's rename this after that I am also going to duplicate the natural sketch brush drag it on top and I'm gonna change this into a color brush as well so now let's repaint the color for this portrait so like what I said before you need to use it on this layer directly do not use it on another layer unless you are using that layer as a blending mode like so here like this okay so if you're doing this you of course you can use any brush you like but now we are going to test the brush itself so we're going to use it directly on this grayscale layer and let's pick the color soft brush first for this I would use my easy color palette this is a really easy color palette if you want to quickly color your portrait bear in mind I am not pressing very hard if I'm pressing very hard this would happen so it would actually cause a huge change in the portrait itself so I'm pressing very softly so usually a portrait has orange zones red zones and yellow zones so now that this is the skin tone we need a red zone for the blushes so that's all we need and then for the nose maybe for the eyes so for the lips we can test out and see if this color works Okay, for the eyes, just drop in a grey would do. Pink for the ears. And of course, we can recolor the hair to any colour we like. So you can see here how quickly I am doing this. It's so easy. So the reason why I have another brush is so that I can use it to do details. 
So let's say I want to create more detail. I can start picking colors and recoloring by the way. If you can see that it's already coming around, you can start picking colors. And let's say here there's a lot of mistakes. I want it to remain gray so I can pick the gray and color again. Just like that, it's so easy, it's almost done. Of course, we have to pick a highlights color. And usually, if you have any changes you want to make, like for example, you want it to be darker, like this, you want this part to be darker, you can always switch to the shadows brush and start dropping in shadows. So like this, you can just very quickly change the color of painting and rework a painting, recolor a painting and change how it looks in a matter of seconds. Okay, right now we're going to move into something slightly more difficult but fun. So that's a reason why this project is in a square canvas because every brush shape, remember when you created the brush shape and changed the brush shape right here, this brush shape itself is 2048 by 2048 resolution which is the size of this project so you can use this project anytime to create brushes all you have to do is make sure that your brush shapes that you create has a black background and white strokes okay to signify the brush mark so right now what we're gonna do is create a hairbrush so a hairbrush is one of my most popular brushes in my brush packs and people use it all the time so this is the brush that we're going to create right now let's just start with the eraser brush okay now we're going to create the brush a hairbrush literally has strands like that together that flows so we need to sort of create the strands and decide how they would show up so if you see here at the beginning of the brush stroke it's made of dots like this and this is actually all we need remember the background has to be black so let's go and make sure you're on the classic color palette it's very easy to pick colors when you're on the this palette so you can just drag it all the way down to this corner to have black drop it into your canvas now let's add another layer go over to white and paint some dots so for example i'm gonna paint this dot 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 and believe it or not this is all we need for a hairbrush so go right here let's go to add and copy canvas okay go back into the hairbrush go to shape edit import paste so this is what we have as our brush right now and let's just press done there we go we have a hairbrush already look it's as simple as that so let's test it out on the portrait create a new layer okay you can see i have some hair here already let's pick that color and go slightly brighter you can see that it's so easy i'm painting hair already that's all it takes guys to create brushes play around with shapes to get the behavior that you want this is the first step of creating brushes it's really fun very motivating very easy very easy to customize let's get back to our hair okay so this is the brush shape that we use to create our hair let's create some glitter brushes so let's clear this of course you can just paste in any image that you like to create your brushes okay so make sure you're on white and we're going to start to create a glitter brush so a glitter consists of speckles so you can decide how your speckle looks like maybe you want a heart shape diamond shape triangle shape some dots maybe some fadeaways all right let's just start with this and call this our glitter brush you can of course create any shapes that you like and just place it in here when you're ready just head over to the settings copy canvas and now let's duplicate the highlight soft brush okay all we need to do is of course rename make sure it's still on color dodge or add depending which one you like and now just paste in our image okay you can see here it's a hairbrush okay so let's change that behavior go over to stroke path increase the spacings until you can see the glitter so now that you can see the glitter let's clear the drawing pad and get just one stroke increase the jitter so that it's more random okay, go over to shape and go to scatter so that it's more random and increase the count and count jitter randomize it now we can go over to grain 
edit import source library you can see that these are the grains that we have okay, let's just pick something that looks like galaxy this one fine here so you can see that it's instantly cutting off whatever is showing so make sure that you are picking either moving or texturize so if you pick on texturize you can see even less is showing so we can adjust the scale to see how much you want to show as easy as this you already have a glitter brush of course if you want to have the glitter brush without the grain you can always just edit this shape until it's perfect to the right size then you will have the shapes that you want if you want the shapes to show like let's say you really want to see the love and the diamond and everything so by using grain in your brushes you get a more random approach so now let's test it out remember you have to paint directly on the canvas so there we go we have our glitter already and you can of course keep on adjusting this to get the effect that you want so as easy as that you get a highlights brush and a glitter brush now and if you just change this into multiply you have yourself a freckles brush so if you just use any dark brown you can essentially put in freckles on her face already it's as simple as that all right we have 11 brushes right now and we are going to go into creating texture brushes so you can see that some of the airbrush the shadows and the highlights is kind of soft and maybe you don't like it that way the most important thing is to create something that you would use you would like and you can use so let's say you would want some textures so let's just duplicate the airbrush to make a texture brush out of this for this let's just create a new layer and if we just paint this you can see that it's just a simple brush so maybe we would want a texture brush for the skin texture for example or leather texture clouds it's really up to you so to do that it's so simple you just have to go to grain go to edit import source library make sure that you are actually on grain or shape before you choose a shape because for shape and grain they come with different sources and sometimes if you are thinking why are they all not this and this they are actually both there so make sure that you're on the correct tab before you continue so let's pick something that looks like skin of course if you can't find something that you like you can always just paste a texture from Google or the internet and because they have so many here it's sometimes difficult to choose but I think I would go with I always go with either leather or orange peel when it comes to skin texture there's also a variety of paper texture here for you to create canvases texture or paper texture for you to paint on it's so simple so I'm just gonna pick a leather texture and you can see that it's creating streaks like that if you do not want it to be strict and you want it to be actually like textured so you have to change from moving to texturize so moving means the grain is actually being dragged okay so if you texturize you are stamping it so let's just move to texturize and you can see right away that we have a texture here so what we want to do is make sure that all this is uniform or else it's going to be patchy like this when we paint let's adjust the scale first okay the scale seems correct right now but we need to edit the brush you see the brush is leaving away all these strokes okay much better now change this to ultra soft yep let's go and test it out and pick something dark this is what's happening when I apply the texture you can see that I have to use a darker color because if I use a lighter color it would be inverted because you would want the lines to be dark because that's how leather should of course you can turn this into a shadow brush or highlights brush anytime so if you use a light touch it's actually quite natural right now if you want to use this to apply highlights all you have to do is head over to grain tap on this edit all you have to do is tap with two fingers to invert the image 
Another trick is also to rotate it if you want to rotate it but double tapping with two fingers will actually invert the image. So if you want to apply highlights instead of shadows, this is what you would do. So once I have that, then you can see that it's inverted and now, right now, you have to actually use like the colors to get the effect that you want. But you can tell that it's barely visible and it's applying too much color at this point. So you can adjust that further by heading back into grain and adjust the brightness and contrast. So this will actually reduce the painting element but putting it as a texture. So if you see here, I have a texture already that is quite visible on the screen. And this is how you create a texture brush. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I hope I have covered all the basics of creating brushes in Procreate. If you have any questions, you can drop them down below and I'll try to address them in my part 2 of the tutorial where it's geared more towards intermediate brush making. So I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for supporting me and my channel. Like, comment and subscribe. Bye!